Nav mesh modifiers, add mesh modifier volumes. How do you use these things? How do they work? If you're asking yourself those questions, this is the right video for you. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes, you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 25 of the AI series, we're going to take an in depth look at nav mesh modifiers and nav mesh modifier volumes to understand how do they work, how do they interact with each other, and how do we set up a nav mesh using these to make it where we can have something like a river that runs through a level as a bridge over it to make our nav mesh agents go over the bridge, but sometimes walk through the water if that's a more efficient route. In this video, we're gonna do things a little bit different than before. Normally, we have a large AI series GitHub repository in the link in the description below. This time, it's gonna only have this particular tutorial in that repository. Let me know if you like this format or the other format better in the comments so I know which ones you guys would prefer to see. Now, so far in the AI series, what we've done always to use the nav mesh modifier is just to exclude something we set the area type to be not walkable. What we can do though is change that a little bit so we can make some things always walkable and some things just more costly to walk over. That way, if we have, in our example, a river running through the level, the agent may want to take a path through the water, even though that's a more costly route because they have to go a really long way around find the bridge. I've seen several questions on Reddit about how do I handle this? Why can't my agents walk through water? Why do my agents walk through the water? Why do my cars not stay on the road? All kinds of questions like this and all of them I think can be solved with using the nav mesh modifiers and nav mesh modifier volumes. Both of these work the exact same way. The nav mesh modifier volume just allows you to define a volume to interact with and the nav mesh modifier operates on the object itself. So whenever you do the nav mesh surface baking, it will consider if you're using the renderer or the physics collider for that object you've attached the nav mesh modifier to, and that's what will be considered. The volume allows you to specify any arbitrary volume. Well, the nav mesh modifier volume is always a cube that can be extended in any direction, so keep that in mind. One other cool thing we're going to do in this video is make it whenever a nav mesh agent tries to go through this more expensive water walkway, then they will be slowed down because whenever an agent walks through water, probably they can't move as fast as they can on land. So this will be an optional script you can add to place over these areas whenever you have a more costly area for them to walk over to make the agent automatically slow down whenever they're in those zones. And before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people, and that means that more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you want to help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash academy. You can get your name up on the screen, you can get a voice shout out, and some other cool perks. As always in the AI series, I'm going to be using the nav mesh components from Unity. To add this to your project, you need to open up the manifest JSON file that's in the packages folder and add com.unity.ai.navigation.components and use this GitHub URL. In this video, the first thing I'm going to do is make a 16 by 16 ProBuilder cube that's going to be our floor. I'm going to leave a 1 meter cube in the middle that's going to be a river that we'll put a bridge over. So I'll slice up this cube so I have a two by one section in the middle. I'll vertex color the sides to be green, a blackish one in the middle for the bridge, and then I'll use a blue color for the water. To make it a little bit more interesting, let's make it a two meter wide little river. I'll rename this to be floor and I'm setting it to the floor layer of this particular video. It doesn't matter what layer it's on. Let's open up the navigation panel, which you can get to by going to window AI navigation and select the agents tab. In here, you'll probably only have one agent if you're opening up a brand new project and it may or may not be named player. The naming in this case is not important. We'll add two new agents. I'll call one of them basic enemy and I'll call the other one flying enemy. We'll set the basic agent radius to be 0.33. We'll leave the flying enemy at 0.5 and change their step height to 1.5 and their max slope will max out. I'll then attach a nav mesh surface to the floor, change the collect objects to be children, and then I'll bake the nav mesh. And you can see that the player can just walk all 
all over this nav mesh, which is probably not what we want. The player is going to consider the grass and the water to be the same cost, and most likely they'll like move slower or they should try to avoid walking through the water because it's going to be much more difficult for them to do that. That's where this nav mesh cost modifier comes into play. So what I'm going to do is detach the water faces from the floor, make them a child of the floor, and then attach the nav mesh modifier component. I'll check override area, but we actually don't have an area for water. So they provided this option to say open area settings. And if we click on that, it'll open up us into the navigation panel under the areas tab. I'll add a new one called water and set the cost to be five. Then if we come back to the inspector for the nav mesh modifier, I can set the area type to be water. If we rebake the nav mesh, we'll see the color of this is different because it's a different area now. And the cost of walking over this is not the same as it is walking over the bridge or the grass. What I'm going to do next is duplicate the water object and set it as the child of the water. And I want to do this to show you how nesting nav mesh modifiers works. So if we have a nav mesh modifier on the water saying this is water, but then inside of that we have something that says it's not walkable, then what happens? Well, it actually takes the deepest nested child is the nav mesh modifier that takes precedence over any of them that are in the parent. The parent affects all children unless the child overrides the area to be something different. And what's really cool is this works not only with the nav mesh modifier, but also with the nav mesh modifier volume. So if you want a particular area that you don't want to make a game object for, you can just put a volume there and it will override that area as well. I'll delete that duplicated thing. I'll create a new game object underneath the water and attach a nav mesh modifier volume here. I'm going to size it to be the same size as the water. If I set the area to be not walkable, you'll see the exact same thing happens. This is just showing you what I was saying earlier that the nav mesh modifier volume and the nav mesh modifier work together in the same way that was described where the child takes the highest precedence. So what I'm going to do really quickly is duplicate that nav mesh modifier, set the override area to be water on both of these, and I'm going to remove the nav mesh modifier from the water itself. We'll get into why I'm doing it this way in a little bit, but this is important for the demo we're going to do later. If I bake the nav mesh with these modifiers only, we see we get the same result we had in the first place. I'll then copy paste the nav mesh surface twice on the floor, and I'll set the second one to be the agent type basic enemy and bake that, and the third one to be the flying enemy and bake that. The results aren't particularly interesting. They all have basically the same nav mesh, right? So why don't we do something where we change the nav mesh modifier volume to affect only the player and the basic enemy because a flying enemy probably doesn't care that this area is water and it would be able to walk over it. If we rebake all the nav meshes, we'll see the flying enemy now considers the entire floor to be just floor, while the player and the basic enemy understand that the water is something they should try to avoid in most cases. I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video than I normally do. I'm creating two scripts, player movement and enemy movement. These two I'm actually not going to cover in this video because I've done almost the exact same thing in AI series part one and I want to focus this video on the cost modifier. I will show those scripts and briefly go over them but I'm not going to go into the in-depth detail about why I'm doing each thing like I normally do. The third script we're actually not going to cover yet. We will once we look at how these cost modifiers work in terms of player and enemy movement. And that third script is going to be called nav mesh cost modifier speed reduction zone which is the longest class name i know so stay tuned and we'll get into that one in a minute i'll open up visual studio real fast to show you the player movement and the enemy movement the player movement is really simple click to move we implemented this in ai series part one honestly i don't remember which video we added in the layer mask but that allows us to say rolling and consider the floor for this video the layer mask isn't important but if you want to use this code in a real project i would highly recommend including the layer mask in the enemy movement the important part here is we're going to use the on GUI magic unity function, which allows us to use the IM GUI APIs. So I'm going to just draw a button at the top left of the screen that says move enemy to target. And whenever we click on that, we're going to set the agent destination to be the player's position. Now that we have player and enemy movement, let's go ahead and create our players and enemies. I'll create these as cylinders with Pro Builder, mostly so I can color them with vertex colors. So they'll be two meters tall and 0.33 meter radius.
On one of them, I will attach the enemy movement script, which automatically adds a nav mesh agent. I'll adjust the base offset to be one, so it's in alignment with the enemy model. And I will also center the pivot of these pro builder objects. That way the collision is aligned with the model and the collider there. I'll adjust the enemy's speed to be two. I'll drag the player to the reference there. I'll do the same thing on the player where we attach the player script, set up the agent to be the exact same way. I'll color the player this blue color and the enemy this red color. I'll also adjust the obstacle avoidance height on both of them to be two, which is how tall the enemy and player actually are. Then let's align this camera so we can see what's going on while we're clicking around. Then I'll drag the camera to the player movement so that way we can do our ray casting from the camera. And I'll set the layer mask to be floor. If you didn't change your floor to be on the floor layer, that's okay. You can set it to be default instead. If I then click play and I click around, we can see my agent will walk around pretty quickly. And depending on how far it's going to travel around the water, the player will consider whether it should walk through the water or go on the bridge. And most of the time it's going to take the bridge. It has to be a really long walk around for it to actually walk through the water. And if I split the view here and select the agents tab and have the navigation window selected, we can see the path that the player is taking. We'll see that the enemy behaves basically the same way and we can see that agent walking around with the navigation window as well. So great, they're avoiding this area just as we wanted. But if I'm walking through the water, we see that the player and the enemy both move very quickly through the water. And if it costs five times as much to get through, probably we want to slow the agents as they walk through that expensive area. And that's where our nav mesh cost modifier speed reduction zone comes into play. We open up Visual Studio with the nav mesh cost modifier speed reduction zone. The first thing I'll do is add the required component type of collider and type of nav mesh modifier volume. We'll add a private nav mesh modifier volume, call it volume. And on awake, we'll assign the reference of volume by getting component nav mesh modifier volume. Now, why do we need the collider? Because whenever a player or any nav mesh agent really enters, we want to slow them down whenever they come into the area or potentially speed them up if the cost is small. So we'll do the magic unity function private void on trigger enter collider other and remember this is triggered anytime another collider enters that has a rigid body component on it. This function will get called by unity. So we'll check if other dot try get component nav mesh agent out nav mesh agent agent so that will return true if the collider other has a nav mesh agent component on it. We'll then say if the volume dot effects agent type agent dot agent type ID this will kind of do the bit checking of if this agent is included in the bit mask of the volume effects agents. And if that's also true, so if this volume does affect this agent, then we're gonna do float cost modifier equals nav mesh dot get area cost and pass in the volume dot area. So nav mesh dot get area cost will return us the cost that we set up in that navigation window of the area. And in this case, it would be five. And then we'll do agent dot speed divide by equals cost modifier. So we're gonna reduce the agent speed by whatever the cost modifier is. And then whenever an agent leaves, we wanna do the inverse. So I'm actually gonna copy paste the entire function here, everything inside the on trigger enter brackets, paste it into on trigger exit because we want to do the exact same logic, make sure it's all good. And instead of divide by equal cost modifier, we will multiply by equal cost modifier to return us back to the agent's original speed. We hop back to Unity. On both of these modifier volumes, I'm going to add a box collider that's the same size as the volume. And I'll also attach that nav mesh cost modifier speed reduction zone script to both of these game objects. If I click play and make my player walk into the water, we'll see that they get significantly reduced in speed as soon as they enter the water. And if I make the enemy walk through it as well, they're also significantly slowed. Once they leave the water, you'll see that they can move at their normal speed again. However, whenever the player walks through the bridge, because they kind of hug the sides of the walls, because they're trying to take the shortest path, they actually clip into that box collider, making them be slowed when they're not really in the water. So you do need to be careful about this with the physics collisions here. The way I'm going to solve this is by attaching a capsule collider instead of a box collider because the nav mesh agents will kind of clip on the sides of this water without actually entering into the water. And by having it be the capsule with the rounded corners, the player and enemy can both walk around the bridge, clipping the water a little bit without actually getting slowed down. For this particular example, I'm using a height of 6.5. That's 0.5 less than the size of the water. I also offset it a little bit because I needed to. The same offset that I used for the box and the nav mesh modifier volume works. There's a little bit of a gap by the bridge and whenever the players will go around that corner, it looks like they're not going to clip it.
And if I click play and make my player walk around the bridge, we'll see that the player does not slow down at all whenever they're walking around the bridge. But if I send the player through the water, they will slow down and they'll speed up again. It actually looks a lot better this way because they start slowing down whenever they're fully into the water instead of whenever they just barely touch the edge of the water. Now if I change the enemy's agent type to be the flying enemy agent type and have them follow the player, we'll see that they fly over the water without considering that it is water. So the player will path on the ground most of the time and the enemy will just go wherever like they're flying without having to worry about the water. And they also are not slowed down whenever they walk over the water because they're the flying enemy type. You would of course have a flying enemy model in this case. This looks kind of weird because they're the same model, but I think the idea is still there. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video and you understand I make a really dynamic nav mesh with different area types using the nav mesh modifier, nav mesh modifier volume, and how to apply those to different agents so that way some areas, some nav mesh agents are affected and some are not. If you have been getting value out of this video or the series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday and sometimes on other days too. Remember there's always a GitHub link in the description below so you can download the entire project at the end to get exactly what you saw at the end of this tutorial. And if you like this format where it has only what we did in this tutorial over the kind of the cumulative one that we've been doing so far, please let me know in the comments so that I can do more videos like this instead of keeping that one repository growing. And of course, if you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing AI into your game, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.